um, in our ground, with the acidity of our ground and the type of climate that we live in, anything that's buried in the ground longer than 50 years is gone. Wooden box, typically gone. Might have some, the nails will still be there typically, unless they're the type of rust quickly. Uh, bones, hair, any fragment like that's gonna be gone. But what happens, as the body is decaying, the ground will sink with it. If it's soft in composition, moist and open, aer aerated, it'll sink with it and leave an indention. And you'll see those periodically. Most of the time, famines come along the way and they'll fill them back in so that it levels up. I mean, honestly, there could be five people right here and you wouldn't know it. Um, sometimes, most of the time, I would say, 60% of the discovery that we find the body has decayed and broken down, but the ground calcified on top of it. And as we go across with our machine, shooting down radar, and it comes back with, with the response, and we're finding an open cavity. The air pocket is what we find typically. Now, around large trees like this, a lot of times the root system will compromise the barrier. So therefore, we'll still see an air pocket, and it may be linear, but most of the time it's going to be broken up. And you're, it's a little bit more difficult to find. But in an open area like this, you'll find the air pocket. As we scan, we tip the, the graves are perfectly east-west, like they were, uh, like most cemeteries are, not all, but most, uh, from west to east facing. There's theological reasons for that. Uh, what we do is scan north-south, back and forth north-south to define, to show a discovery. We'll put a flag down in two-foot increments. Every time we find an open cavity, We'll put a flag down, and then after we got three or four of those flags, we'll come back and run parallel, and then we confirm our discovery. Uh, when we run parallel, I can show you precisely where the head of the burial is, and precisely where the foot is, and we leave a flag right in the center. That tells you, we can show you the width, and the length, and the depth, and give you an idea where someone is buried, where there is a burial. And that sets off, that's different than what you'll find when you find a root or a rock. A root or a rock is not going to be linear, and the depth is typically going to be shallow, more shallow than the grave. And again, it's according to the composition of the ground. The grave diggers, if they had to dig through clay, typically they may not dig as deep. In comparison, when they have sand or a, a different composition of ground, uh, they'll dig deep, and, you'll, and the graves will be pretty consistent. Uh, but it's amazing to me how like in a cemetery like this, how much precision there is when, it, when they're laying the grave out west to east. Um, and the, the widths are pretty typical. They're, they're well done. Uh, back in that era, I guess they had more time than we did, and therefore they did everything a little, little more at a different pace, and even the mundane tasks were done and done well. Uh, but we're able to find all that out. When it comes to doing infrastructure in the city, uh, we can find it. We can find the pipes, we can find the wires, we can find the sewage systems, the gas lines, anything like that, and see exactly the lay of the land of how they're laid out, you know, and show you precisely where water uh, meters come into the water system. We can show you the pipe and show you where it stops as it enters into the water meter. We find, we, we find uh, water valves that have been covered over with asphalt. We find those regularly. We found one actually in a playground at a school recently where they had lost 250 gallons out of a, hot, out of a, a water tower because they didn't know where the valve was. They thought they knew where the valve was and they turned it off there but apparently it had been replaced by another valve and it was in the middle of a playground on a 12 inch water main. And we found it. We found exactly where it was and as soon as we called them out there it was like, you know, all points bulletin. Trucks came from everywhere and they marked that place so that they'd never had to make that mistake. <laughs> They painted it and we got GPS uh, location on where, where it's located. Benjamin's setting up the machine right now, and before he comes over, do y'all have any questions that, uh, that I might have generated in this little presentation? Anybody? How, how far can, like, what size water line can you locate and how deep can it be? Like, you got, at first you got plastic water lines now and copper water lines and steel water lines and galvanized water lines. Concrete asbestos, we can find clay, we can find How deep can they be and how, like, sometimes they get like two inches, can you locate? Okay. Yep, we can. There was a state road in Marshallville where there was a leak. We're at an intersection of the state road, there had been a leak and we found a galvanized pipe, two inch pipe, where it had connected with a water main. They were trying, they had already been 10 days with an open hole 
of course DOT was on them about that. And they thought they knew where the water main was because they saw fire hydrant and fire hydrant. So they put down where they thought the water main might be. Never realized that the state road had been widened years ago. And the fire hydrants had been offset by about 10 feet. So I went to the fire hydrant, did the circumference around the fire hydrant, found the water main where it went out in the middle of the road, middle of the state road. Then I, I charted it all the way down to where the galvanized pipe came in. I was able to see it on my scanner. Right, and they, that's where they dug. They had to go close the one, the other hole, 30 foot away, to find out where the leak was. And it was a mysterious galvanized pipe, and nobody knew it was there. Nobody had a clue why it was there. You know, but that's where the leak was. Metal, and rather than going through the metal, it fires back and gives us a return right away, so we can see a metal vault, a metal vault. Um, if there's a metal vault in the ground, we can show you precisely the, the contour of the vault because of metal. The x-ray, when it hits PVC or an air pocket, it goes through the air pocket or it goes through the PVC pipe. We can show you in a plastic pipe, even if there's something, if there's any type of uh, anything inside the pipe, we can show you where the leak is. If there's a leaky pipe, we can show you how, where the water has come out, if, even if it goes down below the surface. We can show you because we, as we go across it, the machine doesn't go through water very well, so therefore it begins sending back returns. And we go along a pipe perfectly linear, and all of a sudden there's this, this you know, distortion. So we can give you a pretty good perimeter of where there might be a leak. Um, pipes that it really is that. I mean, this machine really is that precise. Hmm. All right. Any other questions? Have any other questions about what we're talking about here? All right. Let's see what we got here. Hold up on the pallet and look. See if we've got any unmarked burials. What we like to do first is to go across a burial that we know is there to kind of get a medium by which we can make a judgment. And the machine is not something where you just turn it on and you come out and there's all your discovery. There's a lot of tweaking that has to be done. The ground is different. The composition of the ground is entirely different everywhere you go. Some more sandy, some more clay. You know, and it takes a while to get it going. But after the machine dials in, that's what I call it, after it clicks, all of a sudden it becomes very evident where you are. I saw a water pipe over here, and we'll, I'll show you in a minute how the water pipe, how that two-inch galvanized pipe will come up. Let's see what we can find, see if there's any unmarked buried here. Here's how we clear the screen. These are plastic standards here. We've marked the ground with plastic standards because the machine can go over those without sending back a return. So we mark them. Can, uh, can you tell us, a lot of times they bury, two, they bury somebody and then they decide that they're going to bury somebody on top of them. Can you yes, tell sir. that? We can. We can see two pipes or two burials. We can. If the depths are real close, which most of the time they will be, they converge. But if they're two a foot or further apart, we can see them because these are typically, they're not going to be perfectly close, but they'll be close, but we can make a difference. We were on a, a water treatment plant yesterday, and we were going along in a pipe, and all of a sudden, as we're going along, there's another pipe that appears right there on top of it. And what happened, there were two pipes as they were being laid. The main 12 inch was here, and it looks like another two or four inch came over across the top of it, and we didn't know it was there. had no clue that it was there, but we were able to pick up on both. Put one there. Yep. 
Forget this part right here. That's where I cleared the screen. As I came across, see, I first found it right there, and I went past it. Then I came back, and I found it again right here. That's the ear pocket right there. And it's at about the top of it's at two foot, and the bottom of it's about four. What I'll do is we'll run it again, and I'll run parallel, I'll let you see the, where it starts and where it ends. Uh -huh. That does happen. Let's get an idea of what this person is like. Okay, I don't have it there, so more than likely, you know, let me come back across this side. much in line with the others. Yeah. That's the head right here. Yeah. We would walk away, we'd leave a flag right here in the middle. That's width, length, and we give you an idea on the depth. We'd give you, we'd, on the map that we would do, on the scale drawing that we would do, the rendering, we would put a space right here and it would be a person that we'd put on unknown. Do you think that, um, can, can your machine tell if, if, if a lot of times we have some bricks over there? Do you uh -huh. think there might be some bricks that might be far under the surface? We can. We can see it. Uh, there's a lot of things that are actually like some people That is one right there. If you want to see it, I'll show you how it looks on the drawing. See how it, it, it's elongated right here? Mm -hmm. The top of it would be, I mean, the, the foot of it, mm -hmm. let me think, the head of it would be on this side right there, right before mm -hmm. it starts going down, and the other would be on this side over here. So I can give you a precise idea of how, where the start of the burial mm -hmm. is and the end of the burial is. Let me show you. That means good depth. Free run through here, I'm getting up. Right. 
or if it's just, I, you know, I have no idea. If, it's, yeah, if I could go further, I'm, the, what, the burial starts right about there, where mm -hmm. the burial starts, mm -hmm. and it goes under. It goes under the fence right there. Huh. See, I, you can see it squeezing. See how everything was just nothing, and all of a sudden, wham, yeah. there's the ear pocket. Mm. It could be an infant, but you see the ear pocket mm -hmm. right there, no doubt about it. Hmm.